Buffalo Bend 15 Golf proudly presents a major championship. The only major championship to be held at the same course year after year because it's just that damn good. Prepare yourself for the golf viewing experience of your life. Welcome to the Devil's Open. What's up, everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again, and we have returned to a channel staple, Devil's Ridge Golf Club in Oxford, Michigan, one of my favorite courses, without a doubt, but also one of the courses I have never broken 80 on in Metro Detroit. Um, there are a few others on the list, but this is definitely the one I want to check off the list the most. I've broken 80 at some really, really tough courses over the years. Totally have the wrong Sylvan club. Glen, I shot a 75. That's a 73.4 rating. State championships, I shot a 79 at Forest Acres from 6,700 yards. Pair of 78s at the PAT at uh, Cat Key Golf Course. I also had a 78 recently happen in tournament play at Cat Key that you guys are going to see some of. And um, that is a video I'm really looking forward to posting. Um, what else? Where else have we broken 80? We've done it a lot of places. Um, especially this year, we've... We've really um, expanded that list a little bit. I've played uh, some pretty decent golf this summer. It hasn't been that much better than last summer, but um, I tell you what, um, I avoided um, through August a really big funk in my game that I normally hit around August and September Some for some reason last year i just forgot how to play golf especially after failing to capitalize off of the 38 front nine at devil's ridge um last year so not the way you want to start out there as you see a bogey on the card although i need to hit a fairway because that right side is not where you want to be really hard to spin it really hard to get it that high and get it to check on a green that narrow from back to front um a lot of people sleep on the first hole at devil's ridge it's a lot harder than it looks it's actually stroke hole eight so it's harder half of the course and um, a lot of people go up there and they seem really really po'd if they bogey it Doesn't look like we're bogey in this hole. Might be birdie time. Might get a two on hole two, guys. And there, guys, was easily one of the best par three tee shots I've had all year. Sticking it from over 200 yards to about 12 feet. I mean, hole two, I've made a six on this hole before. I've played this course um, before this round eight times in total from hole one through hole 18. I did have a couple nine holes in there in high school matches, but as far as 18 hole rounds go, I've played here eight times, uh, and today was the ninth. And I have shot as high as a six on this hole. So that was an, an excellent three, even though it sucked that it couldn't hold its head up there and drop for the two i'm really happy with the three and it kind of got me into the headspace of like okay we're not going to be chasing early this isn't a round that we need to really be worried about this isn't a round where by like the fifth or sixth hole every par is critical and like you can't afford to drop any more shots and 
definitely uh, let my guard That's down a little bit on that tee shot. As you guys are going to see here, yeah, blocked off by these trees. This is a hole I can normally go for in two. This hole probably plays shorter than the par four fifth. I usually have like a five iron if I'm going for the green on this hole, sometimes a six. On a day this wet, probably really it would be a five. But on the fifth every hole, I'm usually going always wood, think wood. every shot through, just like that. And um, the fact that I couldn't go for it there is definitely like, ah, come on. I'm really going to give up a birdie like that, but I suppose it could be worse. I suppose we could have gone out of play on that tee shot. We would have been taking a drop in those trees and still having to punch out after the drop. Put it up in the air, didn't he? And it looks like I won't be avoiding a drop. Big mistake. Big mistake. I thought the wet ground with the recent rains might be able to save it, but just those ones where you pull them long and left, they sure feel good, but they don't end up good. I, I, I probably hit that six iron 190 yards in total. And as you see here, excellent chip shot to get ourselves at least back into contention for a bogey. So I'm thinking, okay, two over through three is not what I wanted, but it's not the end of the world. We're, this is not an unmanageable spot to be. So pretty straightforward putt here. No, he's not in yet. And there's an early miss. Always hate those. Those just ones that just sap your confidence early it's like oh yeah yeah that's one that'll probably come back to haunt me later right so headed into this putt here for double which honestly is equally as tough as the last Ooh. and it goes in Yikes. it goes in that did not look like a confidence stroke there as it hit the left edge so chad ramey goes two seven Back-to-back -back days. Just did not expect that shock to the system. Just, it's crazy what one bad shot can do. Because honestly, getting an up and down from where I dropped that ball is probably 30% likely. And getting down in three is probably only 90% likely. I mean, not even guaranteed, so... It's crazy how it, it can go from par to double bogey that quickly. It helps when you stay in play, as I do on this tee shot, which is a, a really, really big shot that I kept dry here. I knew I needed to really focus. And we got ourselves a pretty manageable birdie putt. This is probably the closest I've ever been after a tee shot on this hole. And it's going to be the first birdie I make on this hole. Oh, That's only the roar of the two we heard. Got to be one of the great shots in history of the game right there. So that is exactly what we needed to do there, guys. Going from plus three after three to plus two after four. Uh, it just, it even sounds a lot better, you know? It sounds like more than two shots. Um, and... It it certainly felt really, really nice to get that birdie. I think number four is a hole that, again, a lot of people don't give enough respect. The par threes at Devil's Ridge, two of them are two of the five of them are over two hundred yards, and four out of the five of them uh, have water involved or wetlands, which. Uh, Man, it's uh, it's always nice to get a par on one of them. They are not easy, and they really do make this course as tough as it is. So, after a really good drive on this fifth hole, had a five wood in, was trying not to chunk it because I knew if I chunked it and it went any bit left I was going to be absolutely screwed and in the water again and I knew the one thing that would really 
kind of drain my energy and put this round right back in a spot where it would be extremely tough to recover from. As again, I hit a great shot after the uh, top with the five wood. But, um, and, and notice guys, I didn't really say anything like, oh, when that five wood top shot happened, because here's the deal. The 461 yard par four, you're not going to make par more than 20% of the time on a hole like that. You're just not. I remember there was a hole on the PGA Tour that used to be on the PGA Tour at Disney's Palm Golf Course. That's 473 yards from the Blue Tees. And I actually played that course um, during spring break. Uh, two days after I played Knob North, Dad and I went down and played the Lake Buena Vista and the Palm Courses at Disney. And um, the Palm 18th hole, that par four that I played, and I played from the tips that day too, and I shot an 81. I played great. I wish I would have filmed that round too. Um, and uh, one of my favorite players, Robert Garrigus, won at Disney World, not at the Palm Course, at the Magnolia Course, but there was a time where that tournament at Disney was played on all three courses uh, when it was uh, the National Car Rental Classic um, and when they switched their name to the Funai Classic and then later on the Children's Miracle Network Classic, um, they only played the Magnolia. But, um, no, but that was a great trip that I took. And um, I remember that, that final hole... I, uh, it was playing into the wind, light was quickly fading, it was like 6.30, um, and it was almost dark, because it was early March, you know, so still winter technically, obviously Florida, winter is a figment of your imagination, but, uh, no, but light was quickly fading. I could hardly see the ball. I was eight over on the day, and I needed a birdie to break 80. And when I saw the card, I was like, oh, no. There is no chance in hell I'm going to birdie, let alone par, probably one out of ten times. Well, as I was so rudely interrupted, he scores with that birdie. Man, look at that. Going birdie, bogey, birdie. One under on the three-hole stretch of four, five, and six, which is, in my opinion, the toughest three-hole stretch on this nine. Just absolutely tranquilizing the damage that was done on hole three. And... I hit this drive excellent as well. I always like, this is one of my favorite tee shots I get to hit on the channel because I always like hitting towards the camera. I know you don't get a shot tracer on it, but it's it's cool that you can like see the reactions on my face a little bit too. Um, I'm thinking of doing it a little bit more often, but I know you guys like the shot tracer. I know the videos started looking a lot cleaner um, when I implemented the shot tracer. And... Um, as you see here, I keep this hole pretty clean. I go, well, not really fairway, but fairway green. Tiny, I mean, I was only three, four yards off the fairway, so we'll say fairway green, I suppose. And uh, hopefully one putt, but two putt would be fine as well. But, um, yeah, as I line this putt up, guys, going back to my story at the Disney's Palm, that final hole and that was back when I was having a lot of problems with my driver back when I started thinking you know what the flyzy is probably reaching the end of its tenure um with my bag and um I remember and, and uh and the problems with the driver were amplified because of the lower altitude in Florida I mean, in Michigan, you're at about 600 altitude for most of the state. In Florida, you're no more than 50 feet above sea level in most areas of the state other than the panhandle. So 
I was dealing with a driver that in the simulators, a good hit for me was going like 230 at the time. Yeah, I had a lot of problems, guys. Um, but I had to go to Florida at sea level where I knew the drives would be even shorter. And um, I had to play a 6,800-yard course in front of me on that palm course. And um, honestly, it was probably the best 81 I've ever shot in my life. I bogeyed the final hole, as I don't do on this hole, by the way. That was a great par to keep our bid of holes four through nine going under par intact. We're one under on the last five holes here, guys. All of a sudden, this round has turned really far in our favor. And we got a chance to repeat the 38 we got last year as long as we can par this. And that's definitely a good start. Probably my second best drive of the day after hole five, I would say. So... Off to, yep, didn't even make it to the fairway. <laughs> it just, it felt like the palm course, that kind of shot. I, I just remember that final hole, it was 473. It was getting dark out. It was getting really cold. It was playing straight into the teeth of the wind. It was playing easily 500, 510. It, it was a par five. Don't kid yourself. Um, but... I hit my drive about 220, and it honestly wasn't a terrible hit. It was a little healy, but it was not nearly as bad as a couple I had that day. Um, and then I had a three wood. I had, and if you've ever played the Palm at Disney, um, there's a creek about 70 odd yards uh, from the front of the green that you have to go over on your second shot. And I hit a three wood I, 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 and I poked this thing and it cleared this creek by maybe 10 yards. I had like a 190 carry to get over this. I knew if I miss hit it, I needed to start praying. And I almost still didn't make it. I, when I hit the ball, I thought, oh yeah, that's easily over. And then I see it fall short of where the second fairway starts. And I'm like, holy crap, this hole's hard. But the reason I mentioned it, and as we've just kind of talked through this nine, and all of a sudden we're done. 38 plus two. Excellent performance. Especially with a double bogey on the card. We were even the rest of the eight holes. Um, 15 putts, two out of seven fairways. Uh, one penalty, obviously the one on three. And um, if I'm not mistaken, Mistaken. Five greens in regulation, I think. I, I obviously can't see it on the screen right now because the card's cut off because I can't spoil the back nine because if I had I had it zoomed out, I'd spoil the back nine. But um, as far as I remember, five out of nine. So, yeah, pretty decent stats, but as I was alluding the, that fifth hole uh, to the 18th hole at the Palm Course at Disney – because um, in 1990, that hole was ranked the sixth hardest par four in America. That hole that I played on spring break. Now, obviously, that was 30 years ago. But the PGA Tour scoring average on that hole, get this, 4.673. It was incredible. I'll have to leave a link to... Um, that uh, stat where I found that in the description, if I can find it. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some other ones on there uh, that some holes like the one on Cypress Point, the 223 yard par three that that course is famous for. That's one of the hardest par threes in the world. That was like a 3.4 scoring average. The PGA Tour plays some crazy courses and even they sometimes have a hard time making par. And when I made bogey on that 18th hole at the Palm, because I had a pretty darn good uh, gap wedge to a really tough back pin location, I felt like it was one of the best fives of my life I ever made. And uh, Devil's Ridge, to be perfectly honest, that fifth hole, 
461, and it's super flat too. And uh, right around a lot of marshlands, the air is kind of heavy. It really does remind me a lot of the Palms 18th hole. And, um, man, what a treat it was to play there. What a treat it was to play here, too. This is always fun, coming back on the last week of August playing here. Um, yeah, I'm uh, sorry I wasn't really narrating a bunch of shots this uh, this video, but... 38's a damn good score. I'll let it speak for itself, I guess. And a much shorter video than uh, a lot of other ones I've done lately. Hey, you play fast when you play well, right? Same thing goes for uh, YouTube videos, I guess. So, back nine will be out pretty soon. I've got my winter break coming up. My intermission between... My fall and my spring semester, thank goodness, got three weeks to just exhale. I've had a great semester too, guys. And you guys are going to see um, that in September and uh, the beginning of October. Um, the middle of October, I struggled a little bit. But uh, then late October and the couple rounds I played after that, um, you guys are going to see probably pound for pound, the best two and a half month stretch of golf that I've ever posted on YouTube. I had such a better finish to my season than last year. And um, it's came down, that last round came down to a really exciting conclusion with a scoring goal that I was really flirting with heading into that round. And I had a chance to get it. <sighs> I won't spoil that for you. You old guys are just going to have to stick with me. I'll probably... My, my goal is to have every 2023 video done and uploaded by March of uh, 2024. I know I have a tough semester. Next semester I'm taking, as of right now, uh, it might change. I might decide to change it. I'm taking 15 credits instead of 12. I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be working a lot. Um, so I'm really going to try to pump as many videos out as I can over this break. Um, so you guys won't be left hanging for the last couple rounds for as long as you were at the beginning of this year. And I do apologize for that. But uh, alas, this is not my full-time uh, gig. This is at best going to be a side hustle for me if I ever do get it as large of a following as I need to start making money on this platform, which would be a nice goal for me. I, It would be nice, but I do know in the back of my mind that this is probably never going to be um, my main source of income, but it's fine because I, I love what I do. I love where I'm at. I'm really proud of the way I, ha I handled the end of this year and this semester. I had a really good comeback compared to spring of 2023 semester. And um, I'm going to take that attitude right into 2024, guys. It's uh, it's going to be great. And you guys are going to see a lot of cool places that I'm going to go. And you guys are going to – and I can't wait to take you along for the ride. I, re I, I really am looking forward to it more than anything. All right, guys. I'm going to let you all go. This is Buffalo Ben 15 signing off. Have a good day, everyone.